which leads me kind of to my next kind of topic, which is we get extra senescent cells, we're accumulation of senescent cells, we get older. Okay, so how, so A, well, how should we get rid of them? And how, sh and how could we do that? So I guess the first part of that question is, yeah, is it a good idea to get rid of senescent cells as you get older? Right. So, so I think, you know, we're, we're really at a point right now where we're starting to understand senescent cells um, enough to be able to devise different approaches to, to kill certain types of senescent cells. Um, and I'd say the, the idea started um, probably around 15 years ago uh, where there was a, a mouse that was engineered in the uh, Van Dersen lab at the Mayo Clinic where they were able to uh, put a suicide gene onto a protein that's responsible or a marker or like an endpoint of, of senescence called P16. Mm -hmm. And so all these cells that would start expressing this marker of senescence would, uh, if you gave them a, a particular drug, you'd be able to specifically kill those cells. Um, so these were really revolutionary experiments that showed that elimination of senescent cells um, essentially ameliorated aging. So these mice uh, lived longer uh, or these mice actually had less disease burden, I should say, um, uh, till, till, their, till, till the end of their, um, their lives. Um, so that, that really kind of set the, the stage that, you know, looking into senolytic therapies, if we could find a, a type of um, approach that could selectively eliminate senescent cells while leaving non-senescent cells there uh, could be a revolutionary treatment. <laughs> would there be any possible downsides? I mean, if we could el eliminate all of them, would that be a good thing? Yeah. So, so that's a, you know, an, an, another excellent question. Like what, what is the, is there uh, an actual benefit to having some of those senescent cells? And again, some of them are important for reprogramming or fixing damaged tissue. Um, so certainly those types of senescent cells, we probably don't want to eliminate. Um, but when you start to have an acute disease and you see your senescent burden rise, um, you know that those senescent cells are producing inflammatory factors, then I think they become quite um, interesting uh, targets for therapy. Right. So if we want to reduce our senescent cell burden, right, is there any natural way? I mean, does like fasting or is particular diets that would enable you or exercise maybe that would enable you to kind of reduce your senescent cell burden that we're aware of? Yeah. So, so in terms of the fasting, so, so it's fasting is an extremely powerful tool, um, but we don't really understand uh, what the dosage is of a fasting mm -hmm. regimen, you know, so, and it varies tremendously from person to person. So, um, so again, if you, if you go into a fast, you, you don't know how long it's actually going to take to get into, to, to face, um, called autophagy, for example, where you, where you start to kind of, you know, catabolize your, your, um, uh, certain components of the cell. And so that's thought to have some benefit, you know, and could even, um, could even modulate that, that whole phenomenon. Um, but we just don't know how to dose that. So, so I think you're right that intermittent fasting is quite good. Uh, the link to, to senescence burden is not clear. And then the other thing is, you know, all the, the if you're talking about natural products, then, um, uh, if you look at, uh, anything that can quench, uh, reactive oxygen species is potentially good because you, uh, a lot of the DNA damage actually comes from reactive mm -hmm. oxygen species, but this is again, very theoretical, you know, so it's not, it's not really, it, it might be a very, a very minor type of contributor that probably in the long run is, is beneficial, but, but again, the, the data is certainly not, not extremely solid on that. Okay, so another way of reducing senescent cells would be uh, senolytics, which is something we've touched on. Could you talk about, so if we're gonna use senolytics, what, what are the parameters we should think about? I mean, should it be uh, the dosage and the timing? So but particularly, I, I think you could take them like 
once a month or something like that. Is there, what should you think about when you're thinking about this analytic? Right. So, so I, I think it's it's still the very early days um, of Senalytics, um, and actually, you know, there's been two trials that officially looked at uh, Senalytic cells. So, so I think we're we're really in the infancy of the field. Um, I think the you know the kind of most positive outcome would be that you take a Senalytic treatment, you remove all your senescent cells, and then you're good for you know an X number of time that's not defined until your senescent cells uh, reform. So it's hard to say, you know, we can um, look maybe at a place where, where this has been explored is in, in, in diabetes. So uh, we know that, for example, before you start to get um, these vascular uh, problems in, in diabetes, so leaky blood vessels, um, which would be in the very early stages of diabetic retinopathy, that could take, you know, between 10 to 20 years before you start developing those symptoms of, of vascular leakiness um, once you've been diagnosed with diabetes, you know, so, so it's a pretty protracted um, process. So the idea there, um, and we know those, those endothelial cells, those vascular cells that are leaky are senescent, or at least we have some pretty good evidence for that. Um, so the idea there would be if you could eliminate those cells, you probably buy yourself a, a significant amount of time before you need to receive another treatment before they re-become senescent. Or ideally, you know, you you eliminate those cells and then you start to have a better glycemic control, and and hence, you know, you can have a um, a disease modifying approach. So so that that would be you know the best case, I say, or, or very a very good case, right? Um, now, whether this applies to the rest of the body, I think we, we still don't know, frankly. Um, and I think it, it's things that we will find out in the, in the next years. Um, so essentially, how long does it take from the time that you eliminate your senescent cell with this analytic to the time that other cells in your system become senescent and then you need another treatment? Right, so at Unity, uh, are you so so unity what one of the things unity is producing is analytic analytics right so is Correct. there anything you can share about how the unity analytics work or, or where you are with them sure yeah so so the ones that we've uh, advanced into clinic um, are bcl inhibitors so bcl2 family member inhibitors and one in particular that's in um uh, commencing a phase two trial for diabetic retinopathy um, is called uh, UBX1325. And this is an inhibitor of one of these survival proteins called BCLXL. Um, and so what we found, and this was around four or five years of, of research of trying different approaches, um, we found that um, when you have a sick blood vessel, um, versus a healthy blood vessel, the sick blood vessel will start expressing BCLXL and all these other features of cellular senescence. Um, so by using a BCL and XL inhibitor, we can discriminate healthy vessels from sick vessels. And so we think this is a very you know, new way of actually approaching uh, retinopathy treatment and, and likely beyond just the eye, we're starting in the eye now. Um, but so by inhibiting that BCL cell, we can drive the, the six cells into an apoptotic state. And because these are highly regenerative cells, then the, the, the healthy ones will be able to regenerate. And we're essentially, uh, repairing parts of the retina that were otherwise damaged by, by diabetes. So that's the general premise of what we're doing right now. Um, and beyond that, well, of course, we're you know, exploring um, different other orthogonal approaches or, or adjacent approaches to, to find just analytic uh, mechanisms that will obviously first be safe, uh, mm -hmm. second of all, uh, efficacious, and third of all, disease modifying. Right. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.